Hello there, this video will go over how to install GIMP in our Linux desktop on a Chromebook. If you are interested in Linux on a Chromebook, then you may be interested in my playlist that will go over how to install and set up a Linux desktop on a Chromebook without rooting. GIMP stands for GNU Image Manipulation Program. It's a powerful tool for editing and creating pixel-based images. If you're working with vector images, then you'll want to work with something such as Inkscape. Now, some of the examples of what you can do with GIMP are creating backgrounds, YouTube thumbnails, doing photo restoration, scaling, cropping, and more. To install GIMP, we are going to use Synaptic, which we can get to by going to the menu, and in the Preferences section, we are going to open up Synaptic Package Manager. We are going to want to make sure we are online at this point because we are going to click on the reload button to get the most up-to-date list of all the available software packages in Synaptic. When Synaptic is done reloading, we can then click on the search button and then search by name for GIMP. Once the search is done, we can right click on GIMP, select mark for installation, and then click on Mark for the additional required changes. From there, to download GIMP, we need to click on the Apply button and then click on Apply again to confirm we want to download GIMP. When GIMP is finished installing and the Changes Applied window comes up, we can go ahead and click on the Close button. We are going to repeat this process for the rest of the installs. The rest of the installs can be seen in the list that came up when we first searched for GIMP. For the purpose of showing what to install, I clicked on the S in the first column to list the packages that I've already installed first. By default, the packages are listed in ascending alphabetical order. Clicking on S for the first time will list the installed packages first, clicking on it a second time will list the installed packages last, and then clicking on it for a third time, we'll go back to listing the packages in ascending alphabetical order. I also adjusted the height of the description on the bottom to show more from the list of packages. At this point, you may want to take a screenshot of the rest of the installs for quick reference. First up, we have GIMP-Data-Extras. This gives us some more brushes and patterns that we can play around with in GIMP. Next up, we have GIMP-GAP. The GAP stands for GIMP Animation Package. This gives us the ability to create and edit animations with GIMP. After that, we have GIMP-HELP-EN. This gives us the GIMP documentation. Next, we have GIMP-LENSFUN. This gives us a tool in GIMP for correcting photos that have lens distortion. After that, we have GIMP-Plugin-Registry. This has some useful plugins that gives us more features that we can use in GIMP. Finally, we have GIMP-Texturize. This gives us the ability to create a texture from a smaller image with GIMP. Here, I just made Synaptic look normal again, and now that we are done installing GIMP, we can go ahead and close out of Synaptic. Now we can open up GIMP by going to the menu and in the graphics category, we will click on GNU Image Manipulation Program. Now that we've opened up GIMP, we can make the icons both bigger and more colorful. We can do this by going to the edit menu, select preferences, and go to the icon theme category. Here we can make the icons colorful by clicking on the color icon theme. We can also make the icons bigger by clicking on the pull-down labeled Guess Icon Size from Resolution and selecting Custom Icon Size. This will allow us to drag the square that's below the pull-down to the right or left to make the icons bigger or smaller. When we are done adjusting the icons, we can then click on the OK button to save our adjustments. Now a useful keyboard shortcut for GIMP is the Search Minus key. This will make the GIMP window full screen. Here I'm showing an example of what you can do with GIMP where I'm making the YouTube thumbnail for this video. Now if you're wondering how I got the picture of me with the transparent background, I used FFmpeg in a terminal to take the green screen out of the original photo. 
For the red background, I used GIMP beforehand to create it, and then for funsies, I made it so that it has an infinity loop kind of effect, which you can see as I'm scaling down the screenshot multiple times to take the place of where the empty image was. Now we can open up the GIMP documentation by going to the Help menu and selecting Help. This will open up the GIMP documentation in a browser. Finally, we can get more help or information about GIMP from a terminal if we do GIMP space dash dash help or if we do man space GIMP for a more detailed help. Side note, you may be interested in GIMP's official website www.gimp.org where they have downloads available for Linux, Mac OS, and Windows computers. They also have additional documentation and give news on what's new with GIMP. If you enjoyed this video, then you may be interested in the companion book to this video, The Chromebook Guide to Google Linux. And other than that, see you soon!